Good morning. Today is October 25th, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to First Congregational Church. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are always welcome at our church. We are reminded of our statement of oneness. We are made in the image of God. Thus, as we grow in faith and mature in spirit, that image shall shine all the more clearly. Like Jesus, we are children of God. Thus, as our birthright, we shall live all our days surrounded by unconditional love. Humanity, the image of God, is beautiful in God's sight, part of a magnificent creation. Therefore, we are beautiful in God's sight. The scriptures declare that the entire kingdom of God is within us. Also, we live our lives immersed in divinity. We gather to celebrate that sacred and wondrous truth. Many hurtful and unjust things happen in our world motivated by hatred or fear. Yet also there is love in our hearts. Let us declare that love and knowledge it is of God and promise to grow in love day by day. Our call to worship is Psalm 90 verses 1 to 6. O oh Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generation. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, you mortals, for a thousand years in your sight is like yesterday when it is past or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning, it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening, it fades and withers. Our unison prayer. Gracious and loving God, as we draw near to you this morning, Draw near to us and help us experience anew your presence with gratitude. We want to know who we truly are and why we react to events happening all around us. There are so many voices saying so many different things that it is hard for us to know the truth. With your guidance, help us to seek what is honest, what is just, what is pure, what is lovely, what is gracious, what is excellent, and what is your will for our lives. May our words, our thoughts, and our deeds reflect our faith in you. Amen. Opening hymn is 222, O Holy Spirit, Root of Life. Thank you. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you is not in vain. 
But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel. Even so, we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others. Though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Second reading is Matthew 22, verses 34 to 46. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment is the, in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Today's sermon is how do we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, when Saul met Jesus on the road to Damascus, he was a persecutor of Christians. And when Jesus said to Saul, why are you persecuting me? All of a sudden, Saul realized that persecuting Persecuting the Christians is equivalent to persecuting Jesus. And so Saul said, who are you? And Jesus said, I am Jesus. Why are you persecuting me? You see how Jesus identified himself with his followers. And Saul became Paul. Not a persecutor, but an ambassador for Jesus. So he went about not only preaching to the Jews, but also preaching to the Gentiles. And he kept telling the people, his appeal is not from deceit, not from impure motives, not trickery, trickery, not to please mortal, but to please God, because God has called him. Jesus appeared to him. So in spite of all the opposition, persecution, he persisted, and he told the people, if you want to preach the gospel of Christ, if you want to tell somebody about your church, 
if you want to share the love of Jesus, there should be no flattery, no pretext for greed. You should be gentle like a nurse. During this pandemic time, nurses are needed because of so many patients in the hospital and nurses who are called to care for the sick. So to be an evangelist, to share the gospel, Paul said you have to be gentle. You know, when you tell people about your church or about Jesus Christ, about the love of God, you have to be gentle, like a nurse caring for her patient. Not only that, St. Paul says, you also have to share your own selves because the people you care for should be very dear to you. They should be like a family member. You know how you treat a family member, how parents treat their children. So when you share the gospel, St. Paul says, Share gently like a nurse caring for a sick patient. People don't know the love of God. People want to love God. They seek all kinds of religion and all kinds of idols. Here you have a loving God. When you share the gospel, share with gentleness. Share your own lives. Tell your faith journey how God has brought you to the point where you want to share. Today, there's a lot of people in need of food. And there are a lot of churches and schools they are giving free food or lunches. And people tell other people, go over there, go over there. They are having a distribution. The gospel is the same way. One evangelist said, sharing the gospel is like one beggar telling another beggar where to find food. That's what we're doing. We who have experienced God's love, God's forgiveness, we want to tell other people about that love, about that forgiveness. We will have experienced Jesus' humility. Jesus was a servant. You say, if you want to be great, be a servant. If you want God to exalt you, be humble. If you are not humble, you will stumble. Pride goes before a fall. So whenever we experience God's love. Remember the woman at the well. Jesus said, give me a drink of water. And uh, the woman, after being forgiven by Jesus, went away telling other people about this person, Jesus, who gave her the living water, who transformed her life. She shared with joy. She said, come and see. There's a man who gave me the water, the living water. If you drink from it, you will never thirst again. What a wonderful way to share the gospel. Let us also be excited to share the love that God has for us and share it with gentleness like a nurse. We thank you for sharing your offering your prayer concern, and we continue to ask that you pray for our country, for our leaders, for all those in the medical field caring for all those patients with sickness. Help us to continue to be gentle with each other. Let us now unite in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Closing hymn is three five two. Go forth, for God. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the comfort, guidance, and challenge of the Holy Spirit enable you to go forth and share the good news of Jesus. Go in peace, and the God of peace go with you. Amen. <laughs>